Good morning. Welcome to Cheek and Power Feed, your daily market digest. It is Monday, August 6, 2018. I hope that everybody had a great weekend. Uh, getting back in the saddle here, Monday morning, I am your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chaken Analytics. You can check me out on Twitter. I post thoughts and ideas there. Throughout the day, my handle is at Dan Russo underscore CMT and Power Feed TV brought to you today and every day by Chaken Analytics in conjunction with StockCharts.com, StockCharts TV. You can sign up to receive Chaken Power Feed for free at www.chakenanalytics.com forward slash Power Feed TV. So all four major U.S. equity indices finished higher last week. Uh, S&P 500 was up for a fifth straight week and... From a sector performance standpoint, things were mixed. Uh, you know, REITs, telecom, and healthcare were the big outperformers, while energy, industrials, and materials were, uh, were, were the laggards with defensive pockets of the markets, obviously seeing the rally there. And we'll get to that when we look at the sector tracker a little bit later in the show. Energy came under pressure. Industrials and financials ended slightly lower. Treasuries were mostly firmer with some curve steepening and the dollar index gained half a percent. We're going to look at the dollar today as well. Gold fell 80 basis points down for a fourth straight week and WTI crude lost 30 basis points, although I will note that it is up over a percent this morning. Futures here point to a slightly higher open uh, in the early going of the morning, Monday morning. So let's look at the levels. Knocking on the door of that 2840 to 2850 resistance zone after finding support Thursday morning at the 2800 level. So we're testing resistance at 2840. So support comes into play at 2800, 2771. 2741. Uh, we have the rising 200 day moving average at 2700. As we said, resistance zone 2840.50. We're knocking on the door right now. And then we have the all time highs at 2873. RSI, same story. Remains, you know, in bullish ranges, but has not been able to become overbought. So here's a chest, right? Monday morning, futures are higher. Free, a little, only, only slightly, but futures are higher. Let's see. Can the market push through this 2840, 2850 zone and become overbought? That would get me excited. That would really be encouraging from a bullish perspective. What I will say, though, is for Chicken Analytics subscribers who receive my note every day, you'll notice that there's actually now only one sector with bearish power bar ratings, and that's material. So that is an encouraging sign for the bulls. Another encouraging sign for the bulls, as it has been since early May, is shaking money flow uh, with, a, with a bullish reading here and actually closer to the higher end of the ranges where it's been since May. So that that's one for the bulls, but we really want to see that momentum confirmation on a breakout. That would really get us excited. So your market in a minute, Power Feed TV, subscribers every day in your email. We'll give you the kind of the five bullet points that I think matter. S&P 500 is on a five-week winning streak. Real estate is emerging as a market leader. Is that the case? You've heard me talk about it. I said I'm open to the idea. Let's dive into the chart a little bit later and check it out. Dollar on the verge of resolving higher. We'll look at that one. Small caps are oversold. We'll look at that. And then futures do point to a higher open. From a power bar perspective, all of the major indices are skewed to the bullish side as they were through most of last week as well. Dow saw an improvement. Six bullish or very bullish stocks for two bearish or very bearish stocks. S&P 500 did see an improvement as well with 107 to 64. NASDAQ now skewed four to one in favor of the bulls. I know technology, you know, has come under pressure of late, but you know, I, I, think that was an, I think that's an opportunity. I think you have an opportunity here to buy stocks like Amazon and Google uh, that are oversold within uptrends with bullish check and power gauge ratings. Notice I didn't see Facebook, right? Because Facebook actually broke down. There's some technical damage done there. It also has a neutral rating. Twitter has a very bearish rating. So you, while we have seen some weakness in tech, let's be selective. Let's follow the process. Let's stick to the game plan. Amazon, Google, names that have become oversold within the context of uptrends. Small caps did underperform on Friday. And I'll tell you what, the power bar ratio has seen some deterioration from a ratio standpoint. There's a, there's a higher number of bullish stocks, but we also added more bearish stocks than we did bullish stocks. So the ratio actually deteriorated. And here's real estate up 1.3% on Friday. 
four to two. Real estate is now in the top four sectors that we track from a power bar perspective. So according to the power bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks remain somewhat bullish. Major indexes are mixed. Mixed is that choppy trading. But you know what I think? I think we resolve to the upside. Zimmer Biomed is our stock of the day for PowerFeed TV subscribers. And ticker symbol ZBH has a very bullish power gauge rating due to very attractive financial metrics, very strong earnings performance, and very strong price volume activity. Stock close at 125.91, up 1.21% on Friday. And as we said, very bullish power gauge rating. Strong trend within a strong industry. Let's walk through the process. The ribbon at the bottom of the screen tells us where the power gauge has been for the past 12 months. And you can see we're on that very bullish rating now and have been since the tail end of July. However, just recently, stocks started to outperform relative to the market. So the market now agrees with the model. Our dynamic duo is in gear. Money flow. Institutional investors are starting to come to the stock here now, as we can see from the bullish shake in money flow. But what I will say is this, the earnings gap higher caused an overbought reading on the chart. You have resistance here in the 128, 129 level, kind of got near it on the move higher following earnings. And now we've pulled back. And what I want to say is I want to give this one time. This is the type of name we want to own. Very bullish stock outperforming the market, strong trend in a strong industry. However, we want to buy it right. Tactically, it doesn't make sense right now, given that overbought reading from our overbought, oversold indicator. Let's add Zimmer Biomet to a bullish watch list and wait for a better entry. Our sector tracker, I said we get there. And you can see there definitely is a rotation into defensives over the past five days. Real estate up 3.36% over the past five days. Healthcare, staples, utilities rounding out the top four. I want to say something, though. My observation is this. The knee-jerk observation is to say the market's in trouble because defensive sectors are starting to lead and starting to attract money. I'm going to take the opposite stance. I'm going to say that the market is holding up while money rotates into defensive sectors. That is a positive. That's a healthy rotation that you like to see in a bull market. It gives us time to reset. Some of the groups like technology and discretionary and comms that kind of got ahead of themselves a little bit, they're resetting here. And this is I like to call it the pause that refreshes. I think that's what we're seeing here. You know how I feel about the market in general. I think we're going to resolve to the upside. And I think we're starting to see leadership kind of regroup a little bit, find its bearings after slight reset because it got ahead of itself. Names like Facebook and Twitter definitely got ahead of themselves. Some of the video game stocks definitely were ahead of themselves. I think we're seeing the reset here. And this is great. One of the industries we're looking at today the NYSE tech services industry has outperformed the S&P 500 by about 1.2% over the past six months, but the power bar is very strong. That's a measure of future potential. It's in the top one third of subsectors that we looked at, and it has moved up four slots over the past week. Some of the indicative names there are Google, Microsoft, and Oracle. And you can see the power bar is six to two in favor of the bulls. And we're going to look at Google today. And the reason we're going to look at Google is because, you know, Power feed, the email is generated based off our algorithm. But what's interesting is Google is a featured stock here today. Google also happens to be my stock of the day for Cheek and Analytics members in my morning notes. So let's, let's dig in on Google and find out why I made it my stock of the day. And I think if we follow the process, it's pretty easy to see. Power bar tells us where the power gauge has been. We're on that very bullish rating. Strong trend, strong industry outperforming the market. The market is in agreement with our model. Our dynamic duo is in gear. Money flow has been strongly bullish since late May and early June. Stock is above a rising long-term trend line. What interests me here is you've had a breakout above 1,200 on the earnings gap higher, and now we've pulled back to retest that. This, to me, sets up a good entry, and our proprietary overbought, oversold indicator says the same thing as we are an oversold territory. I think that Google looks compelling for an entry on the long side here and now 
That's why I made it my stock of the day in my, in my morning insights note to Chaikin Analytics members. Add Google to the portfolio. Add to long positions. Seems to me like the best risk reward. Trending. S&P 500 movers over the past day. A lot of it earnings related. Dish up 14%. Take two. TTWO got beat up. When Electronic Arts reported, they come out and report a strong quarter on their own. Stock goes back up 9%. And there's something interesting here that I'm starting to keep an eye on. You know, I am a technician, but I do also have an MBA. I'm interested in businesses and industries and business models. And something that's kind of caught my attention lately is what's known as esports. So I'm starting to dig in a little bit, do some reading on that subject, and see if names like Take Two and Activision and Electronic Arts are beneficiaries of this new developing trend known as esports. Uh, Kraft Heinz up nearly 9%, FLR up over 7%, and Cerner, good name. This is a good combination of technology and medical services. CERN, bullish stock up 6%. All kind of neutrally rated stocks here that were down mostly on earnings. Washington Mutual, neutrally rated stock. Again, though, I like business models. And in a world of, in a world of PayPal and Chase Payments and peer-to-peer -peer money transfer. I wonder how Western Union, WU, holds up in that environment. Does have a neutral rating, but I'd like to dig in and see how things play out there. Your earnings update, uh, you know, nothing really to report on a Friday. Reporting today, bullish name, Newell, uh, before the bell, MOS, EVHC, and Endeavor, ANDV. ANDV is probably the stock of most interest today. Bullish stock reporting after the close. It's a name that Mark Chaikin, if you read his Market Insights newsletter every Sunday, which I advise you to do, a uh, great read to kind of get you set up for the week. Mark's been bullish on Endeavor for a while. Uh, on the neutrally rated stocks, ANSS, ANSYS has been a market leader in, in the software space. Definitely would take a look at that one after the bell. And no bearish stocks reporting, uh, reporting today. But you know, just keep in mind as we go through earnings season, we like caution when holding bearish stocks ahead of earnings. Maybe you look at trimming some of your position. If it's a long-term hold, maybe looking at options to hedge your strategy if you do have a bearish stocks ahead of earnings. So as we ask the question, is real estate emerging as leadership? And here we have the XLRE, the select sector SPDR real estate fund. And we can see a nice fresh breakout here through this kind of 33, 33 half level. RSI is in bullish ranges. And here's XLRE relative to the SPY. And we can see a, you know, a series of higher lows, but we haven't gotten that breakout yet. That breakout on a relative basis is what we're looking for. We may get it here this week. Um, who knows? But when I look at the power bar ratio, for real estate and the fact that real estate has now moved into the top four slot within Shake and Analytics. When I see this breakout on an absolute basis, when I see this RSI remaining in bullish ranges, I kind of, it gives me confidence that the thesis that I've been talking about for a while, which is, you know, real estate forming a bottom on a relative basis is beginning to play out. It's taking a little bit more time than I thought. You can see it here. We had this little pullback. I think I first started talking about it in early July. Here we are in early August. We haven't broken out yet, but the thesis is in play. The song remains the same. I would not be surprised to see fresh relative highs for real estate. Start to look selectively at bullish and very bullish real estate stocks within Chaikin Analytics. Dollar on the verge of a breakout. Here's the UUP, the US Dollar Index Bullish Fund above the 50-day moving average, above the 200-day moving average. RSI remaining in bullish ranges, bullish money flow. Would not be surprised to see us take out these July highs and move higher. And that could be encouraging for small caps, which have become oversold. Here's the IWM, still outperforming the market, although not as strongly as it has in the past. But here's that oversold with bullish money flow above support at 160. And I think a fresh high or local high on the dollar would really help small caps kind of find their footing on a relative basis. So that's a trend that, you know, we said it's due for a pause. The pause has played out. 
Let's see if it starts to reemerge. I think some of the ingredients are there. So you can get powerful, profitable stock ideas and more. Sign up for Shake and Power Feed for free at www.shakenanalytics.com forward slash Feed TV. And a special thanks to StockCharts.com. Have a great day, everyone.